Now to look at the health challenges still ahead of us as the novel coronavirus continues its worldwide spread, I'm joined now from Toronto by Dr. Isaac Bogash. He is a specialist in infectious disease with the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Toronto. Dr. Bogash, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me here. Uh, quick question. Um, the WHO so far has not declared this COVID-19 as a pandemic yet, and yet many of you, you and many of your colleagues are saying that the situation is evolving from an epidemic to a pandemic. Uh, can you explain what that means? Yeah, so I mean, really all a pandemic refers to is the global uh, spread of an infection. And whether or not we use that term today or in two days or in two weeks, you know, quite frankly, I think it's kind of irrelevant. The, the messaging also from the WHO and even from senior health leadership in Canada has been to prepare for more imported cases and prepare for the possibility of locally acquired cases. So if we're not calling it a pandemic, we're still getting messaging to prepare for one. And it's interesting you mentioned that because one of the senior officials at the World Health Organization briefing today, which we're going to play later in the show, he says that the approach is still the same in the sense that there's still going to be a degree of containment, as we saw in China, with relative success and mitigation in terms of taking care of the, the cases that come up. Yeah. I mean, I think when we're talking about the term containment, I hope no one gets the impression that we actually think that we can truly contain this infection in the sense that we build a theoretical wall around it so it doesn't spread. That's not what's going to happen. We've seen these massive public health initiatives in China. Uh, they worked very well to slow down the spread of this virus, but they didn't stop the virus. And I think the realistic strategy here is whatever initiatives are taken, it might slow down the progression of this virus uh, as it spreads from country to country and as we see more and more cases in currently affected countries. But I don't think that we're going to be able to stop this virus from, from spreading. So as you point out, mitigation strategies are also extremely helpful. How can we mitigate the impact that this virus has in Canada, in our provinces, in our cities, in our communities, and also globally as well. What is the most difficult thing about this virus? Well, I think one of the, no, there's several. Uh, one is that we didn't even know it existed about two months ago. So, you know, there's been a rapid, steep learning curve. Uh, but it's rather impressive, at, you know, the amount of data that has been generated and useful data, high quality data, and also data sharing that we've seen in the last two months. So we're certainly a lot better off now than we were you know, two weeks ago and two months ago. I think one of several issues that really comes up is that you know, on the plus side, we know that the vast majority of people who get this infection probably have a pretty mild course of infection. Uh, but that also means that it's more challenging to stop the spread of this infection because if people aren't sick enough to seek medical care, if people aren't sick enough to really realize that maybe they have this infection, they can continue to transmit it to others. And this is, I think, why we're seeing it spread in many communities. So it's not as infectious as the flu, where the flu, you can be asymptomatic and you're already shedding the virus, but because they're mild symptoms, we're not seeing people uh, showing the symptoms and they are starting to become contagious. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to know, right? There's There certainly has been a few cases of people who did not have any symptoms of this infection. Okay. Some of those cases, when you scratch the surface of it, you realize those people actually did have symptoms. Others, maybe not so much. It's not entirely clear what the degree of transmission is in people with zero symptoms who ultimately don't develop any symptoms. That's, that's still an unknown. But we know that people with mild symptoms uh, can certainly shed the virus. And we know people with mild symptoms uh, are increasingly uh, represented in some of the data that's being generated and there may be a, a significant proportion of people who have this infection who just don't feel all that sick, but are, are certainly spreading the virus to others. What's going to be the biggest challenge if and when we get our outbreak here? So in other words, we have you know, a case which is then spreading other cases in Toronto or Montreal or wherever, if and when it happens in Canada. Yeah, certainly I think we're going to really need to have um, our health care systems and our public health systems firing on all cylinders in order to manage this. And, you know, over the last few weeks, there has been behind the scenes a lot of scale up on this front in terms of communication strategies, coordination strategies, laboratory capacity strategies, looking at where the there's the potential to put patients and, and, and think about patient flow through 
uh, through emergency departments and hospitals. And you know, it's like it's it's hard to find a silver lining in the midst of a. Uh, you know, when you're sitting on the precipice of a pandemic. But one of the silver linings, at least for us in Canada, is that our influenza season is coming to uh, an end. And we're certainly in the tail end of the influenza season. Influenza is a busy time in Canadian hospitals. We just see more patients with influenza and influenza-like illnesses. You know, the emergency departments are busy, the wards are busy, the intensive care units are busy. And thankfully, uh, you know, the timing of COVID-19 does not overlap with our influenza season, which will be helpful because we'll just have more capacity in hospitals if the need arises. I was reading something out of the United States and it was a physician who was writing saying he was very concerned about the United States because, because of lack of public health care. A lot of people go to their physicians, their family physicians, and he says that people who are potentially contagious will be going to family physician waiting rooms. What's the best advice to Canadians if you're starting to feel symptoms and you're wondering whether it might be coronavirus or the flu or a really, really bad cold? Is it to go yeah, and see? Sorry. Oh, well, what I was going to say is we're getting some very good advice and guidance from senior health leadership in the country. So, for example, Dr. Teresa Tam, our Canada's chief public health officer, just released um, a really helpful document today uh, that's essentially a playbook for healthcare providers on, you know, diagnostic testing and personal protective uh, equipment and managing cases and, you know, and, and so we are getting some very good guidance from uh, senior public health and clinical leadership in the country. And this is going to be extremely helpful to frontline healthcare providers and also to uh, to the general public. Uh, I think the other thing to appreciate is, you know, we're still learning more about this infection and guidance will change as we learn more. So, you know, some people think, oh, you know, we were doing it this way and now we're doing it this way. That's actually reflective of you know, knowledge translation and learning more about this virus and then translating it into meaningful, actionable items that we use to care for people or we use to care for communities. And, uh, you know, currently, you know, people are now getting diagnosed in, in emergency departments for this infection. But you can see a time where if there's a, a greater number of cases here in Canada, where, you know, that might not be the best strategy. And maybe there'll be, you know, f we can facilitate outpatient diagnoses or even say, you know what, if you're not feeling unwell, stay home. So, you know, I, I expect to see evolution of our strategies with how we're dealing with cases and also communities affected by this infection. Uh, in a few words for uh, for the average Canadian, wash your hands, be uh, be aware of what's going on and maybe make preparations if you should have to self-quarantine? Yeah, I, I mean, certainly uh, it's still a respiratory virus, so the same rules apply. Cough into your arm, wash your hands, impeccable hand hygiene, stay at home if you're sick. The other thing too that I think people can do is if people have chronic medical conditions or other medical needs, now's a really good time to get those looked at. Now's a good time to optimize your health. It's a great time to fill your prescriptions, make sure that you know if you need to have, be vaccinated, be updated on your vaccinations, and really ensure that your other chronic health care needs are optimized You know now in preparation for possible infections in the near future. Okay, Dr. Bogosh, I want to thank you very much for taking the time. Anytime.